So hello again and welcome to our session on agriculture opportunities in Ethiopia. This session will include two short interviews with interesting professionals who have great experience with agriculture in Ethiopia. So we can learn about the country's current status and future potential when it comes to agriculture related business. So first I would like to invite His Excellency Ato Wondale Habtamu, State Minister for the Ministry of Agriculture in the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. So please, Minister Habtamu, uh, if you could uh, please join us on stage. Meanwhile, I will present uh, Minister Habtamu is assigned to lead the horticulture sector with the rank of State Minister at the Ministry of Agriculture. After the liquidation of the Ethiopian Horticulture and Agricultural Investment Authority, this is the first appointment of a dedicated a high-level official for this sector. Uh, His Excellency has tremendous experience in the Ethiopian agricultural sector. So, without further ado, uh, we want Mr. Habtam. Let's wait a couple more seconds. Let's start with the second interview, which is Ari. Uh, Arya, I'm inviting you to the stage. Our uh, second speaker, uh, Mr. Arya Dubov from Tikkun Olam Ventures. Arya joined us. Hi, Arya. I'm going to present you now. Mr. Dubov is the director at Tikkun Olam Ventures, TOV, which is a program that provides African smallholder farmers with access to Israeli agricultural technology. TOV, Tikkun Olam Ventures, is the new development assistance project of JDC, the leading Jewish humanitarian organization which leverages Jewish philanthropy and mobilizes Israel's innovative tactics to transform the lives of smallholder farmers in developing societies. Tikkun Olam Ventures is currently focused on Ethiopia and has been profiled on CNN and PBS. Thank you for it is a pleasure to have you. Would you like to start with your video? Great. Great. Yes, so Jesse, if you could please help us with the video. So the video, we're going to start with the presentation. Thank you. Israel is uh, some kind of an economic miracle. We had to face uh, water challenge from day one. We don't have enough water. So we had to come out with advanced technologies. One of them is the drip irrigation. It started with uh, saving water, but it appeared that if you give the plant the exact amount of water, you actually increase its yield. Seeing the world today with its uh, challenges, we believe that Israel has much to offer. We wish to share this knowledge with the world. In Ethiopia, we have a lot of resources. The land, the water, and the labor. But we don't have the, the skills and knowledge and new technologies to improve our agricultural productivity. Our agriculture is rain free Most of the farmers, uh, they wait for the rain. So, if there is no rain, the farmers are getting starved. Tov is very different in its nature because it's a very unique uh, project. Tov is a joint project of the Israeli government, the JDC, and the Jewish world. And its aim is to provide high technologies in agriculture into uh, farmers in Ethiopia. I count one, two, three, Isra. For one inch, I will do ten. Okay. By using Israeli advanced technologies, those technologies that improve the life of the citizens of Israel could be used for the benefit of Ethiopian farmers. It's not just giving the money. By selling the Israeli technologies and with the support of the program, the Ethiopian farmers will see the benefit of it and everyone will, will earn. This is a win-win situation. Technology 
ለግብርና ይጥቀመኛል ህይወቴ ከነልጆቼ ቀይረኛል ብዬ የምቀበለው ቴክኖሎጂ ድህነት ላንድም ቀን መታየት የሌለበት ነው ኢትዮጵያ ውስጥ we managed to build a very fundamental and sustainable program ካቅሜ በላይ የተንሰራረች ቴክኖሎጂ ናፍቃሉ አድሮ ኦል በቃ ላካባቢም ጭምር ይቀይራል ብዬ ማስበው ነገር ነው እኔ if this project succeed and i'm absolutely confident that it will we can scale it to other countries um to other areas israel has so much to offer to the world we will be able to make many achievements globally Ali that was a great video thank you for sharing this with us let's start with the questions uh Econolam Ventures pilot project in Ethiopia please tell us about the project and and why did you choose Ethiopia as the first country for your operation thank you for the opportunity uh, especially thank you to appear uh, alongside ambassador Reta and alongside state minister Haptamu um largely because much of our work in Ethiopia is dependent on on our close partnership with the Ethiopian government um tov is a program that has many partners uh on the Ethiopian side it includes the ministry of agriculture the agricultural transformation authority and on the israel side one of our major partners is the israeli ministry of economy and industry Why, why did we choose Ethiopia? The ambassador referred to this earlier on when he spoke, um, as did the deputy director of the Israeli Minister of Foreign Affairs. Ethiopia is a, is a country that is deep in the consciousness of the Jewish people and of course of, of Israel. Uh, it is a, a, a country and a people um, whose history has developed alongside the history of the Jewish people and of course there have been many touch points all along the way um, so it was very natural for us as a, as an NGO as an international Jewish NGO to to prioritize Ethiopia um, having said that and to be uh, the I'll say a few words about the program itself Tikkun Olam Ventures as you saw in the video is about providing smallholder farmers in Africa and first in Ethiopia providing them with access to Israeli agricultural technology uh, our focus as I say is smallholder farmers rather than commercial farming or large-scale agriculture and we are there as an NGO because the some of the greatest development challenges across the globe are those that challenge smallholder farming households we're speaking about upwards of 800 million people across the world who live in smallholder farming households and most of those are uh, are at the poverty line just above the poverty line or are struggling to to create more um, uh, more income for their families to be more productive so we as an NGO are very uh, chose to focus on on smallholder farmers um, and we saw as we as we learned more about the the needs of smallholder farmers in Ethiopia that Israel has on the shelf Israel has technologies that can be transformational to them we think about drip irrigation we think about hybrid seeds both of which are products uh, in which israel is is one of the market leaders or is very strong in the market and so we saw the need to try and find uh, a market-based platform a market-based approach which enables farmers to not just receive these technologies but to receive them as part of a business opportunity they are not being granted seeds not being given a gift of drip irrigation but rather they're receiving it on a loan basis and as they see the yields uh, improve over a number of seasons they see their profits grow they pay back the loans and they have the ability to significant to generate significantly more disposable income for the for their households um, that's a few words about the project uh, access to smallholder farmers um, to Israeli agricultural technology. Thank you, Ari. So, so you did mention a couple of the challenges that, you, that, that uh, farmers are facing. When looking at agriculture in Africa, we can see that many of the challenges are connected and focused on the lack of know-how and capital. So how does your project address the, these challenges practically? 
Uh, lack of know-how is a very real problem. Lack of access to capital is a very real problem. I'll, I'll start with uh, I'll start with capital, but first I'll say a, a conceptual word. In the field of international development, there is a growing emphasis on what are called market-based approaches to international development. Uh, as I mentioned, we don't hand out uh, inputs. We don't gift the the opportunity. Rather, we offer a, an a business opportunity to farmers. And there are the market-based approach to international international development says that if you demonstrate to all the actors in the local uh, in the local ecosystem that they can economically benefit from the intervention, that you have a much bigger chance of seeing the the initiative grow sustainably and grow to scale because the market will take it to scale. And in our case, we are looking to demonstrate to the farmers that it's worth taking a risk of receiving a loan and purchasing agricultural technology. It's a very sizable loan, but we're demonstrating to them that it's worth taking the risk. We're demonstrating to the local actors, such as our banking partner in Ethiopia, that it's worth them, their, it's worth, to, worth lending money to farmers. We're demonstrating to ag tech companies that smallholder farmers are a real market that you can access and you can serve and you can profit from. And of course, we're demonstrating to, to policymakers in Ethiopia that they should be accommodating by providing the right regulatory environment and the right incentives. The, 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 I'll touch on the two challenges you mentioned, access to capital. In order for a farmer in, in the Ethiopian case to have enough capital to purchase a significant package of agricultural technology, we needed to build a designated loan fund. Uh, microfinance in Ethiopia permits farmers to receive loans of perhaps $300, perhaps $400, perhaps more. But the package that we are providing is uh, costs upwards of $2,000. So we created, in partnership with the local bank, the Aromia International Bank, a designated loan fund, which uh, we as, a, as an NGO, we, we share half of the risk and the bank is exposed to the other half of the risk. And so we enable farmers to receive loans they would otherwise not receive. Um, secondly, and this is perhaps the biggest challenge, you touched on uh, access to knowledge. The, the technologies that we are bringing in, and, the, um, and as I mentioned, drip irrigation technology and hybrid seeds, the knowledge that is necessary for farmers to have and for local experts to have to support farmers is, uh, in, is, not, is not existent on a nationwide, nationwide scale. So we, with our with our partners, um, we've worked closely. We work closely with Fair Planet, an Israeli NGO. We work close. We have worked closely with Cultivate, another Israeli NGO, to generate the knowledge products to provide training, and it's everything from curriculum to actually providing the training, so that we can build out the knowledge ecosystem that enables farmers to successfully adopt the technologies and use them over a period of time. That is the that is perhaps the biggest challenge that we have. And, and uh, I'm glad that the, the state minister, um, whose ministry is, is, a, is a close partner to us, is, is also listening. And I know that he's very aware that um, we are, are one example of an NGO who are working with development agents to enrich their knowledge and see how they can be mobilized to support the farmers that we are working with. Great, Aya, thank you for this answer. I just want to give a heads up. The minister is going to join us and we want to we want to utilize his time. He's experiencing some uh, technical uh, issues, so so maybe we we can stop uh, in the middle of the questions. I and apologize uh, for that, and just uh, uh, address the minister. Hello, His Excellency. Can you hear us? Hello, I'm hearing you perfectly. Great. It's so nice to have you again. I I apologize. I will go, get back to the the the, the last uh, two questions right after we speak, uh, 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 minister. Um, the minister again. Uh, His Excellency, do you want to start with the presentation? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Your Excellency Ambassador Ratalamu, the Ethiopian ambassador to the State of Israel, different senior officials just from both the State of Israel and Ethiopia, participants, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank you uh, just to, uh, to, to give me such an opportunity uh, to get participated uh, in uh, empowering Africa 
uh, for, for agricultural investment and development so, so far. Uh, and I'm going to just share you my uh, presentation very, very briefly and shortly. My presentation is entitled Bolstering Agriculture, a Potential Fuel for Increased uh, Employment, Agro-Processing, Nutrition Security, and Foreign Direct Investment Attraction. This is uh, something that I would like to talk uh, uh, you know, uh, Ethiopia is uh, having uh, different uh, animal uh, uh, crop and, uh, you know, horticultural products. Different products are uh, found in, in my country uh, due to different, uh, different uh, you know, agroecological zones. Uh, we can produce something that uh, we demand in our country. There is no limitation in producing crop. Whatever you throw in my land, everything is grown, frankly speaking, due to the conducive uh, agroecological uh, condition. Uh, Ethiopia is the largest country uh, uh, in Africa. It is the second populous country and the 27th biggest country in the world. Uh, you know, it is a head of African status. It's a land of origins that every mankind is originated here. The birthplace of coffee and other different uh, crops is a cardinal of mankind, the land of diversity. You can grow everything here. Again, it is the, 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 the youngest nation in the globe. The average age for Africa is, uh, you know, uh, 17 years. Uh, Ethiopia is, is, all, is the oldest independent state in the country, uh, in the globe, uh, not, in the, not uh, in the globe, in the continent. Uh, so uh, it has its own pride uh, uh, in order to, uh, you know, boost uh, our development. Water is abundant in my country. Uh, is the second largest populous country in uh, Africa. So regarding market potential and other issues, uh, you can you can uh, work uh, in different scenarios in Ethiopia. 85% uh, of the population is, uh, you know, uh, participated in agriculture. Uh, again, uh, 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 diversified agroecology. There are uh, nearly uh, 19 agroecologists in Ethiopia. Uh, is one of the oldest states. Uh, we already briefed this one. You know, you know, somehow there is some sort of a stack. Again, 70% uh, of the working population is young. Uh, in general, Ethiopia is very conducive for, for uh, you know, agricultural development. Uh, for your wonder, we have 74 million hectares of land that we can, we, we can plow easily. But of which uh, we are only plowing only 16 million hectares of land with irrigation, rain fed, or with any other means. So land is abundant in my country, so we can we can grow agriculture very easily. Agriculture is the source of uh, you know employment, it is the source of GDP, and it is the source of also uh, nutrition and uh, uh, other macroeconomic situations. Somehow it is stacking. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in my country, there are lots of workforces. Uh, the crop diversity is very high. Uh, uh, agro, uh, agro industries are established, getting established in my country. Agro processing is started. So due attention in policy and strategy is also uh, uh, given with high level uh, management of uh, you know, the nation. Uh, so uh, different different uh, investors even right now are uh, you know uh, investing in my country. Uh, the presence of well connected freight, particularly air freight and uh, railway, uh, and you know different transportation systems makes uh, you know investment agricultural investment very viable uh, in Ethiopia. Nearly 101 international pass, uh, passenger destinations are found globally. Nationwide, there are 22, uh, you know, uh, 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 air freighters. Uh, again, uh, 57 cargo destinations are found globally uh, from uh, the Ethiopian Airlines. Uh, so uh, this is a very, a very uh, uh, conducive uh, issue uh, for bolstering agriculture uh, in Ethiopia. Again, the government is stable. We have a stable government. We have experienced leadership uh, of the country for more than you know, 5,000 years 
so uh, it's a stable government. So anyone uh, who is investing in Ethiopia is getting its premium or uh, the return for investment in Ethiopia is very good. Uh, uh, right now, the Ethiopian government is under reform. Our economy is reformed. Uh, there is a flexibility of policy right now. Uh, the two decade agriculture and rural development policy is revised, revised, highly revised. Again, proactive measures are taken in order to boost, uh, you know, investments. There are incentives, different incentives regarding land, regarding taxation and other issues. Uh, the Minister of Agriculture is taking serious measure, uh, 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 you know, uh, to boost uh, the involvement of private sector uh, in the country. So, uh, in general, the stable government of Ethiopia is highly taking serious measures uh, in, uh, 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 you know, uh, different macroeconomic issues. Uh, right now, uh, uh, there are uh, there are uh, farmers uh, in our country, millions of farmers that are growing, uh, you know, uh, horticulture uh, and uh, livestock, uh, coffee, horticulture and livestock in my country. Uh, the, the rule of contract farming is endorsed uh, with the House of uh, Federation and uh, Parliament, the Ethiopian Parliament. And again, the Minister of Council is also endorsing uh, a contract farming uh, uh, regulation. Uh, so uh, anyone who is coming to Ethiopia uh, can establish his own, uh, uh, you know, uh, farm uh, so that he can he can connect his system with, uh, uh, again, with farmers uh, with, uh, in order to boost production, productivity, and in order to get uh, his own pre premium. Right now, uh, our connection with Eritrea, our connection mm -hmm. with uh, Djibouti, uh, and uh, you know Somalia, uh, just to access the sea is very very excellent. Uh, so uh, uh, the country is uh, you know highly proxim uh, uh, it is proximity to the Middle East and uh, Europe is making uh, my country very, very uh, in order to uh, get its premium. So uh, in all these instances, the government is very keen, and even uh, uh, previously the Trans African Road. Uh, just in, in Limu port in Kenya, uh, there is a road constructed and inaugurated with our prime minister uh, very recently, just a month ago. So these all opportunities give uh, uh, our agricultural sector, uh, you know, uh, highly convenient uh, for, for uh, uh, investment. So is it worth in invest uh, uh, in Ethiopia regarding the agricultural sector? Absolutely, the answer is yes. Because uh, you know, food self-sufficiency is highly uh, a, a basic agenda for the globe. Nutrition security and food security regarding vitamins, minerals, uh, and different diet, uh, fiber, fiber uh, dietary uh, substances are found in my country. Raw material for agro industries is very important. The source of foreign currency is agriculture. The source of imp imp employment is agriculture. In order to uh, you know. Uh, uh, manage uh, the environment. Agriculture is one of the best, the best uh, business. Uh, import, import substitution uh, and export uh, promotion is highly encouraged uh, in my government. So, with all these instances, investing in agriculture and investing in Ethiopia is highly, uh, you know, appreciated uh, and getting uh, a prime agenda with with uh, the Ethiopian government. In which crops? From horticulture, we are we are we are uh, trying to invest. For example, avocado is a national project right now. Nearly 600 million dollar uh, project is uh, you know uh, initiated with the Ethiopian government with avocado. Strawberry is again another uh, project uh, project area. Banana, uh, you know, uh, mango, flour, uh, tomato, potato, uh, uh, and uh, sugar snap and green beans. These are these are major major investment areas uh, from the horticulture sector. Again, from the livestock sector, regarding poultry, uh, you know, dairy, sheep and goats, fishery, fishery, uh, uh, ap 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 apiculture, and others are highly you know entertained in uh, the livestock sector, uh, particularly in fishery after the completion of the Ethiopian uh, Grand Renaissance Dam. I hope uh, Ethiopia would be one of the best East Africa fish, fish 
uh, you know, developing and growing country. So with that also, uh, we are looking everything uh, uh, in advance, in advance. So anyone, uh, uh, anyone is, uh, you know, uh, uh, invited in order to invest in the livestock sector, just similar to the horticulture and crop sector. Again, in cereals, uh, you know, in Sisame, uh, there is uh, a very good opportunity in Ethiopia in which uh, there is a lowland, a lowland area, uh, in lowland area, even the Israel government is looking this this area. Again, uh, uh, you know, in coffee uh, and uh, uh, in different beans, uh, you can you can you, you can invest in my country. So the business model that you are going to follow is highly uh, studied, carefully studied with university instructors. Uh, for example, uh, the business model that we are going to follow is. First of all, uh, you can grow a nucleus farm. You can you can develop a nucleus farm. Around the nucleus farm, there are different learning plots that you are going to have. So with all the, the learning plots, uh, you are going to teach the technology that we are uh, lacking. We, we lack the technology, the new agricultural uh, and modern technologies that uh, Israel is having. So with that, uh, with those different nucleus uh, farms, uh, the learning plots are, uh, you know, accompanying different farmers, millions of farmers or thousands of farmers. You 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 can join for the capacity that you are uh, uh, having. After that, the Nicholas farm uh, is, uh, you know, developing different innovative farmers. Those innovative farmers with the contract farming and uh, other issues, uh, you 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 can grow uh, and uh, you know develop your 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 system. So. Uh, why not also process, uh, uh, you know, your producers here in Ethiopia? In Ethiopia also, there are different uh, agro, uh, uh, integrated agro-industrial in parks. Uh, right now, there are four big industrial parks, uh, 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 agricultural industrial parks that we are establishing, and uh, integrated agricultural industrial parks will be also established. 17, 17 in the near future, we can we can develop 17 agro-industrial parks. So those model uh, and innovative farmers and uh, the nuclear farm uh, can can uh, form, uh, you know, a very uh, stringent uh, business environment so that they can they can process, they can pack, and they can export as well as they can also sell in, in my country. With that, uh, uh, we, we we can submit every every business model uh, uh, we have. Uh, we can submit you the documents because we have on the shelf projects uh, so that uh, uh, the, the business farm for example if you see uh, my picture uh, right now the business farm uh, can can develop uh, you know uh, uh, can provide out growers the packing house the cooling house and different technologies with that with the cool chain system exactly he can collect the standard pro product and he can sell uh, you know, through the Ethiopian cargo system to Europe and the Middle East. This is one model. The second model is the business farm can sell uh, its produces uh, to the urban uh, supermarkets as well as he can sell uh, through the Ethiopian uh, railways to Djibouti and, uh, you know, through this train to Europe and uh, the Middle East. Thank you so much. That was great. Um... You actually answered the questions before before we ask them. Thank you so much for presenting all this to us, Minister Abtamu. We learned a lot from your presentation and insights. We look forward to collaborating and promoting our business in Ethiopia together. Uh, yes, we can, uh, go back to our previous uh, interview with Arya from Tikkun Olam Ventures. Aria, we already asked you about uh, the TOV's operation in Ethiopia and uh, the challenges that you're facing regarding lack of capital, lack of know-how. You, you actually made your work with the NGOs, uh, Fair Planet, Cultivate. Uh, I would like to ask you to talk about that. Please elaborate on the hybrid aspect of your project, which is extremely interesting for us. How does this collaboration actually work between a philanthropic NGO local farmers, ag tech companies from Israel and governments, please show. The 
the market the market based approach to international development means that you need to engage the private sector you need to engage with ngos you need to engage with the government and so when you when you do that you need to analyze the incentives of each actor why uh, what is the, what is the government trying to achieve in the space that you're entering what are ngos looking to achieve in the space that you're entering what does the private sector want to see as value what would be an incentive for the private sector and most critically for farmers as the the minister indicated in his remarks most critically for farmers you need to demonstrate that it's worth their while and it's worth taking taking a risk so at the outset when you're dealing with so many different motivations you need to map them out um, it's kind of a it's it's kind of a venn diagram where you where you articulate each of the incentives and you see how you can harness them together how you can uh, how you make them overlap and once you've identified those common interests you need to be constantly uh, stating them and restating them and restating them in order to ensure that all the different actors know why they are involved um, and they need to be aware of and genuinely take responsibility for the the roles that they that they must take so in our case um, our case of, of tov is a is one example of how you need to be aware of the entire system that you're operating in you need to understand the the entire supply chain and recognize what what steps you need to take at each step along the supply chain in the case of ethiopia the supply chain is still is still in development it is uh it is it's uh, it has a long way to go it's still quite rudimentary um and for that reason it's uh, the program that we are that we are uh that we have we are implementing in ethiopia uh feels at many times like quite a heavy lift it's not it's not uh, it's not straightforward and uh, in the context that the minister just described um one needs to understand that that um everything is very nascent the uh, particularly when you're looking at smallholder farmers um it's uh, it, it's an extremely it's an extremely challenging uh, an extremely challenging environment and that but that's that that what that is what underpins the market based approach and again as i said before if you if you succeed with the market based approach it's the forces of the market that will take your your in your initiative to scale and will take it to scale sustainably yes thank you thank you for that sounds like the the, the hybrid model is is working uh, it, it it takes a long time but it's working and, and it's it's very interesting to see so let me ask you please what are your plans for the future i mean uh expanding in ethiopia replicating the project to other countries in africa how do you make sure that the fruits of your effort, knowledge that you uh, pass on to farmers stays with them and it is transitioned also to the next uh, generations? So as we, we, we have a long way to go before we say that our program has succeeded, we're on the path to success and we are, but uh, it's challenging as I said. We, uh, as we look to the future, we need to do a few things. One is we need to make our, our model as robust as possible in Ethiopia. We need to grow it in Ethiopia. 2020 was meant to be our first year of growth, but because of Corona and, and some of the other challenges in Ethiopia, we didn't grow as much as we wished, um, but we, uh, we are looking to see 2021 as an opportunity for more growth. We are in contact with other African countries, different, different actors in different other, other African countries who are interested in Israeli technology. They're interested in Israeli innovation. And uh, if we apply the same principles, uh, as we are applying in Ethiopia, we can, I think in the next two to five years, we'll see some kind of TOF program, uh, hopefully in South Africa, hopefully in Ghana, uh, and possibly in, a, in another country. But in the immediate term, we're very focused on, and this is my last remark, on the, in the immediate term, we are, we are using our, our work, our platform in Ethiopia to bring more Israeli innovators to, to into the market. Um, uh, a, a, a program within TOV, a sub-program with TOV that we do in partnership with the PEARS program for a global innovation, the PEARS program that's based in Israel and that has been promoting Israeli innovation for development for uh, for over a decade, uh, together with PEARS um, and of course with the support from the Ministry of Economy. We brought a year and a half ago, we brought a delegation of Israeli startupists, startup uh, uh, 
of heat from startups in the space of solar powered pumps, uh, integrated pest management, and solar and cold storage. We are now, we've just completed uh, an RFP for our second innovation journey, which is focused on digital technologies in agriculture. Um, we have created, uh, we have um, close to 40 companies responded to our uh, RFP. Some of them are focused on fintech, some of them on edtech, others on smart farming, um, data collection, market linkages, all Israeli companies, some earlier stage, some later stage, who will be participating in our innovation journey. And we are matching them through our network in Ethiopia and through the PEARS program network in Ethiopia with, with, with partners who are relevant to each of those fields. So we have a list of partners from the private sector. For example, the Bank of Abyssinia is one of our partners. The, the Technology and Innovation Institute, which the government initiated, uh, NGOs such as Farm Radio International, um, innovative companies like Kafia, which is the leading company in Ethiopia in uh, providing financial services, uh, not just for the rural sector, but also for the rural sector. We're partnering with them. Um, and so the next innovation journey, uh, which, which starts in the coming month, will bring Israeli innovation, introduce them to potential partners in Ethiopia, and drive forward some, some digital technology solutions that will that will that will contribute value create value and contribute significantly okay wow Arya, sounds like a lot of collaborations partnerships joint ventures are being created and that's that's super interesting and relevant so thank you so much for being here with us and sharing your experience with us uh, thanks for the opportunity i also want to apologize for for cutting you in the middle it was due to technical issues, and thank you for your understanding and for being with us. Thanks, Arie. Thank you. Okay, it is already time to finish this session and get back to our networking space. I want to thank the participants again for sharing their perspectives with us. We learned that there are many ways to drive agricultural business and initiatives in Ethiopia, and we want to thank the participants for their insights. Now you're all welcome to go back to the main lounge, continue networking, and enjoy our platform. Feel free to reach out to us through the chat or emails for any questions you may have. Thank you all for listening and have a fruitful networking session. Enjoy.